65 million years ago, reptiles ruled the world. On land. In the air. And reptiles were kings in all the seas as well. But then came a great cataclysm from outer space. An asteroid 12 miles in diameter struck the Earth. This asteroid's massive impact unleashed the power of more than 100 atomic bombs. The sky went dark, and the Earth's climate changed drastically. 70% of all life on the planet. Switzerland? Yes. At this time, most of Europe is underwater, a shallow and warm sea. In the Middle Triassic, it's hot and dry on land with little to eat. In the sea, life flourishes again. Several reptile species have returned to the marine environment, thriving on the plentiful food supply. The Tanistrophias hold a world record. In proportion to their bodies, they have the longest necks ever recorded. With his flat teeth, this placodont mostly eats seashells and mollusks. Aren't those turtles? Not at all, but they too have developed a tough armor to keep them relatively safe from the great predators of the Triassic, like the Nothosaur. Over 13 feet long. Very dangerous, and an excellent swimmer. But it is no chance of catching up with a Mixosaurus. It looks like a dolphin. Except it's a reptile. Like marine mammals today, it too must come to the surface to breathe. It belongs to the large group of ichthyosaurs, which will rule the seas for some 150 million years. That one doesn't seem quite big enough to rule anything. There are also some very large ichthyosaurs, some measuring up to 75 feet long and weighing 50 tons, like the Shonosaurus, the biggest of them all. Wow. Like all ichthyosaurs, it lives in groups and mainly eats mollusks and small fish. and whales. That's right. They are even born Ice. in a similar... It could make out its prey in the darkness of great depths. Strangely enough, the ichthyosaurs became extinct in the middle of the Cretaceous, despite their amazing adaptation to sea life. 
But how can we know so much about species that became extinct 90 million years ago? Perhaps because of the large number and the quality of fossils left. And, of course, thanks to those who discovered them. Here we are in London, in one of the most beautiful galleries devoted to Mesozoic marine reptiles. Natalie Bardet is currently the French expert on these animals. A long time before dinosaurs were discovered, the remains of marine reptiles had been known to fossil collectors. Mary Anning. In the early 19th century, she was a child when she started to collect fossils around her home along the Dorset coast in southern England. During her lifetime, with an amazingly sharp eye, she found some of the most famous fossil, ichthyosaur and plesiosaur, exhibited here at the Natural History Museum of London. One of the most complete plesiosaur skeletons ever found was Romulosaurus. This early Jurassic predator was a powerful swimmer. During the Jurassic period, a new group of marine reptiles takes over, the plesiosaurs. At the beginning of the early Jurassic, Pangaea has started to break up and drift apart into different people. Here is a pair of Lyopleurodon. The male is attempting to court the female. Look at her. 50 feet of sheer muscle, four deadly paddle-like limbs, and jaws about 10 feet long that hold teeth, even bigger than the one I gave you. During this process, the male makes himself extremely vulnerable to the female. It seems to have worked. Now that she's chosen him as her partner, the pair needs to head to the safer coastal waters to reproduce. Like sharks, the male Lyopleurodon holds on to the female while mating. Their young will be born in a few months. What happened? It seems that upon separating, she has accidentally injured his eye. The pain has made him lose consciousness for a while. In the end, though, 
the Liopleurodon remains a super predator that lives alone. Illusion is inescapable. If they did not cross the ocean, then the very continents that contain their fossils must have separated. The Jurassic was the age of giant animals. The lead sickpiss is approximately a hundred feet long, probably the largest fish of all time. What are these long-necked plesiosaurs called? Those are elasmosaurs. They're gulping down gastroliths, stones they swallow in order to help their digestion. So, what do they actually eat? Mollusks, and a lot of fish, judging from their long, sharp teeth. I believe that's the male Liopleurodon that was wounded some time back. Oh yes. With one eye missing, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> 